Hello there, Erunar here, and today we will review Rhodes faction. Rhodes is led by Tlepolemos, a hero which is good for buffing your other units, quite balanced combat stats. You are not good at dueling though, but for killing other infantry units. For Rhodes infantry roster, which starts with the Rodian Spear Militia. Instead of typical militia, we got a very weak spear, which is weaker than standard spearmen. Then we got the young spears, standard chargers and duelists, uh, very good and recommended to use. We usually skip the spearman completely because it's very weak unit but if you don't have but we don't have any better front line in the early game instead we got flankers rodian warriors uh, very fast very good flankers and duelist they are able to toggle disability spread and charge in order to make them uh, even better at charging so they can deal a lot of damage early. Then in uh, mid game or around mid game we got access to Island Club Warriors. Solid uh, unit. It's uh, invisible when it's not moving. Otherwise it can duel any mid tier or early game unit very easily thanks to very strong weapon. Then we got Light Swordsman from the Watchtower. It is another flanker uh, without extra abilities but with flanking attack improved. In the mid game, we got finally relatively good uh, frontline. It might not have huge defense stats, but flanking defense is very valuable, especially in the Troy. Then we got flankers. They have excellent combat stats for mid tier. Flanking bonus is very nice. With high charge bonus, you are able to spread and charge very efficiently, and then the, uh, turn off this ability after your charge bonus is gone. So they are able to win duels nicely. In endgame we got standard spear frontline which is uh, Rodian Noble Spears. They have uh, nice uh, defensive stats, standard weapon and flanking defense with strong vigor makes them uh, usually better at holding line than other frontlines. And for elite unit we go with the companions of Tlepolemos. This these guys have a very strong weapon and very high charge which you want to use with the spread and charge ability. Against weaker units you will be using this cause fear ability quite often. It will make them around easily. But keep in mind that this is quite slow unit because it's heavy. For the missile roster uh, this Achaean faction has Achaean slings, very good, uh, recommended, affordable, they always get their value. In early we got Rodian Hunters, these missiles, these javelins are slightly better than uh, uh, standard or standard island skirmishers. Comparably, it, they are better in melee, they are not so squishy and our Rodian Hunters can throw javelins while running. Next we have Bowmen, which we do not use in campaigns uh, because it is a very weak unit and with terrible range and damage. Instead, in the mid game or early game we go with the Rodian Slingers. They have amazing range. They have new ability, the volley, 
they are able to shoot uh, projectiles from 200 meters. And one thing that makes uh, Radiant Slings best in the game is number of models. Every other slings, like these ones, have only 90 models, but the Radiant Slingers have 100, which makes them the best slings in the game. Then we got Radiant Skirmishers. They are quite average standard javelin unit, which is able to throw javelins while running. And they are holding quite strong shield. Next upgrade is the Radiant Veteran Slingers. They have 180 missile range, which is a solid long range uh, number. Also with volley ability you can outrange anything thank thanks to this. And again they have a lot of models to deal extra damage. With the javelins uh, we got veteran uh, skirmishers which have decent combat sets. They are not as elite as different uh, elite javelins but they do use the strongest javelins as others and absolutely the, the strongest the most elite slings in the game Rodian Iriam slings have 100 models as well they have uh, 190 range which is the maximum and if you need more you can tr shoot, use volley ability they also throw quite strong rocks as well for the chariots, sadly, this faction has only medium melee chariots, but uh, just like Itaka, we got access to skirmish chariots, which we don't use. You shall use uh, the chariots instead. And in the end game, you can uh, use reinforced skirmish chariots, which are as good as heavy chariots. They are doing a lot of uh, javelin damage so they are definitely worth it and let's see one simple battle with this uh, faction it was from the campaign your very first opponent is going to be memnon from the latest troy dlc and you will have the opportunity to kick his ass right away. So, this is not a standard typical map. We are going to play choke point right from the start. There are three parts. One Memnon himself. In the middle there is a lot of uh, tribesmen with some archers. And on this side uh, they got a mid tier, very strong. Earjet stuff bearers, so this is the dangerous enemy with some hidden slings behind. I have decided to bring uh, some frontline flanker and javelins to this section. In the middle, I will be using my slings with a lot of range to provoke enemy, and maybe I will be able to surround them here. Since I'm not going to split my forces like uh, Memnon, I will be able to outnumber uh, opponents on these two choke points. And then I will reserve one unit to hold the line if uh, enemy decides to come at me. So let's see how this plays out. So, we are able to throw our militia into the battle and also follow up with slings to outrange and out damage the archers. On this side, we are preparing nice sandwich against Irjet Staff Bearers. And we will quite soon go and flank this unit to win fight. Your hero is under attack. I will show this maneuver. 
I am shooting this unit with javelins, so this should be quite easy victory. And meanwhile, in the middle, enemy has already made a nice blob. My slings are already dueling the archers. And with hero, I have decided to switch my frontline unit to deal some extra damage to make them recover a little bit and to engage with hero. Opponent has Memnon himself and some javelins still far away. And as you can see, on this side I have managed to break this unit and I have only one Egyptian Slinger's unit to be bothering me, so I will be able to come to the middle and help my hero. So divide and conquer, enemy divided his forces, we overwhelm them and we continue. Let me show you the Arena Rodian Armored Swordsman. This is a mid-tier unit and you start campaign with uh, these strong dualists or flankers. So I, I, I'm quite confident going 2 versus 2. We got, they got just javelins and some standard spears against my strong against my strong swordsman. Meanwhile, in the middle, we will need help soon. Bringing units, it will take a while. So far, our slings won the duel efficiently because we start with more models and more range. Here, it seems that our unit is having all models, while the Memnon has lost one quarter already and losing even more. So it is a very good battle situation for us here as well. So, what else do we have here? Our hero is doing well. We have managed to kill and route hero and this will help us to win every other battle elsewhere. And as you can see, chain round quite easy win. And you can experience this by yourself in the Rhodes campaign. That is all. See you later.